We're at the 22nd Croy. My name is Fred Scheich. I'm here with Kevin DeCock, who we've had the pleasure of meeting, uh, I believe, every single conference since the, the conference, since I began with the conference, not you, but it seems like a million years. But it's been uh, a great experience. We've always enjoyed having you to talk about the world health issues. And you've had a number of positions over the years, and you're back at the CDC uh, with the uh, director of the Kenya country. That's right. I'm the CDC country director. director. Yeah. Uh, so Kenya. that's a, a great opportunity to you know to be back where you old stomping ground, I guess, if it were as it were. But it it gives you the opportunity to uh, to kind of go back there and maybe see how things have changed. Maybe that's the best thing we can cover in this particular. Uh, moment here. Uh, you were with the CDC and then uh, World Health Organization and uh, a lot of different hats. <laughs> so tell us how that, how that experience is, has uh, enriched your, your um, AIDS experience. Well, you're right. I have worn a lot of different hats. I'm, I'm originally by training a clinician. I sort of mm -hmm. lost my way and mm -hmm. ended up in public health uh, mm -hmm. working for CDC. And I've, I've worked in the, I mean, I've worked in Europe, in the United States, uh, in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, and I've been primarily interested in the AIDS, the, the global aspects of the AIDS epidemic, particularly in Africa. Um, it's remarkable, of course, to reflect on the changes that have occurred mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. You and I have met repeatedly at this conference, mm -hmm. and every year there's something new to talk about, which mm -hmm. I'm always surprised by. The flavor of this conference clearly has been very heavily uh, towards PrEP, pre-exposure mm -hmm. prophylaxis. Um, and of course, the big event in global health over the past year has been the Ebola epidemic in West mm -hmm. Africa, uh, which is not directly related to CROI, but we did have a special session on it last night. I think we did that because uh, I'm on the program committee for CROI. I think we decided that simply because it was such an important event in global health, and this conference has become about global health as well because of the importance of AIDS. Um, and there's been a, there are a couple of uh, important scientific abstracts today about that. So it's been a it, it's been a, a wonderful conference so far. We're about halfway through, uh, just over halfway through. Um, really, a, a lot to reflect on. Um, major scientific progress, uh, technical progress, but great reminders also that uh, delivery of these interventions, both in the industrialized world, in high-income countries, and in the South is very difficult. That it's, it's, it's about much more than just the science. It's about people's behavior, about systems. Um, and in a way, uh, I think there's many analogies between uh, the issues we face in AIDS and the, fish, the issues we face in managing things like hypertension or diabetes. Um, but uh, just a, a very good meeting. Yeah, I, I, in speaking with Deborah Burks, this was something that she seemed to think was uh, a, a big challenge. She's, she has a lot of hopes, if you will, and she's ready there to go to, fi to, the, to fight the, uh, the issues, hopefully not the people, because I know it's a struggle when you have to reallocate money, which is a large amount of what's going to happen. They have to re-examine every county by county or city by city or however that's laid out in geographically in, in Africa. Uh, to make sure the money is really being spent wisely because there is so much of it, only so much of it, right. and it is critical that that uh, be judiciously dispersed. So we used to talk about scale up, and, and uh, there, there were days when we began our conversations with uh, when we might be able to get drugs to Africa. And, and I mean, that's a long time ago, but it's, uh, that was in the days when we thought, well, maybe there's problems with them because they don't have watches and things like that and, and the infrastructure was not there and, and countries were falling apart. And that was, I guess, before Clinton, before Clinton's yes. foundation. Uh, so there's a lot has happened with the ability to, to take the bull by the horns and make things happen. So uh, do you, how do you see that your new role, what will your new role be uh, more uh, or less changed in the way you delivered De delivered your, your end of it in Kenya, now that you're back, how do you see that changing? Well, I think the, 
you know, the epidemic is changing and the countries are changing. Uh, many of these African countries um, are emerging as or will emerge in the coming decade as middle income countries, not, not just low income countries. So a country like Kenya um, has quite brisk uh, economic uh, development going on. Um, the countries in the world with the highest growth rates, actually many of them are in sub-Saharan Africa, sometimes from a very low base. Mm -hmm. But these, these societies are changing and uh, they will be expected to pick up uh, more of their own burden as far as HIV AIDS is concerned, other health issues as well. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, they're very dynamic societies. The, the pace of change is remarkable. I think one of the lessons from Ebola has been it, it is not a coincidence that the uh, epidemic is so severe in countries that are so very, very weak. Uh, Liberia, Guinea, Sierra Leone, they're in the yeah. bottom 10. Uh, they have no capacity. They have no capacity. Yeah. And it's interesting to reflect, actually, if, if, the, if Ebola had happened in some of the countries with HIV epidemics, that had, uh, countries that had received PEPFAR resources and global fund resources to a greater degree, whether it would have gone the same way. And I, I suspect not. Uh, um, would have been able to nip it in the bud. So because speak, of yeah. systems that have been mm -hmm. strengthened by the efforts to uh, you know, mount a, a, a comprehensive HIV AIDS response. Mm -hmm. um, with everything that entails, including laboratory capacity and epidemiology and so on. Um, a as we f see this uh, quite significant development, of course, other problems emerge. And we, we have um, health changes that are quite remarkable. You have still a lot of infectious disease, but at the same time, uh, evolving trends in non-communicable diseases, such as cardiovascular disease, hypertension, diabetes, obesity, tobacco use, the consequences of tobacco use, and so on. Um, so the world is changing in front of our eyes, and it's, it's very, very different from how it was you know, in, the, in the 1990s. Um, There's uh, a lot of initiatives that gave kind of a branding to 3 by 5 and 90-90-90. Yeah. I mean, it's, there's all these different brandings which were important to getting um, movement Yes. And getting a, a face on or a, a giving quantity to what it is we had to achieve. I mean, there's still, uh, you know, there's a lot of implementation science to be done. We see developments like PrEP. We don't know how to use that in Africa. There have been studies in Africa, of course, I, of some of the very important findings, disappointing findings out of, for example, the mm -hmm. VOICE trial mm -hmm. showing that uh, at, a pop at the level of the study population, uh, there was apparently no impact, but it's clear that this was related to non-adherence. Yeah. And if you, if you look at the subpopulations who took the drugs, uh, in fact, there is efficacy. Um, so, you know, important reminders that this is not just about technology and interventions and so on. It's actually using these tremendous advances uh, is, is difficult it, and it requires social approaches, behavioral approaches. Um, it's, as always, we see there's a lot more to HIV AIDS than just uh, technology. It's about people and their relationships and their behaviors. Do you help to navigate some of this, the policy or with the country, with the health minister and so forth? Is that part of Yes, position. yes, and we're, we're very fortunate, actually. As you know, I work for the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC. Mm. We are long established in Kenya and have very good working relationships with the Ministry of Health, mm -hmm. uh, which actually is our most important partner, as well as the Kenya Medical Research Institute, um, and have good personal relations with, you know, excellent access, and uh, our, our opinions are sought and, uh, you know, appreciated. Mm -hmm. So yes, we, we certainly do. Was that, uh, I'm just starting to think where Jonathan Merman was there and he did work, I'm trying to think which country. Uh, he did was a it? lot of work in Uganda yeah. and then he was in Kenya for a while as yeah, well. Was, that's what and I he thought. He was in Kenya actually when I was at the World Health Organization. Yeah, yeah. he did. Because yeah. I remember interviewing him yeah. quite a while ago in Boston. Yes, yes. Now he's kind of in charge of the, the program down there at the CDC and yeah. uh, AIDS issues. So. But it's, it's really a challenge to, to think 
back on all those days when we, when we really, there was a great, a great amount of despair, kind of the way it was in San Francisco at the beginning of the epidemic. You know, we had this despair because there was nothing. Yes. And then, there, then it became clear that we, in 1994, when we had this, you know, earth-shattering moment with the, uh, with the, the, the cocktail, and now it seems as though there's the, these other moments that are happening in Africa, uh, country by country. So I'm hopeful that we can see more of those as time goes on. Those, those I'm, I'm, I mean, I think we will see steady improvement, but we must be prepared for setbacks, and some of mm -hmm. this is difficult. Mm -hmm. And I, I do think that it's worth looking at the experience of other diseases mm -hmm. uh, like uh, the, tobacco, the complications of tobacco use, hypertension, mm -hmm. um, cardiovascular disease. Um, changing trends quickly is difficult and uh, because there are so many social factors, people's behaviors, um, not only in terms of the risk factors such as tobacco use, mm -hmm. excessive alcohol consumption and so on, uh, but the, the, the challenges of delivering interventions through the health system this country, you know, the United States does not have a perfect health system. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the issues of adherence and so on. So even if we had a vaccine, um, you know, we have vaccines for many diseases. There's outbreaks of measles in this country right yeah, now. Right. Um, again, just showing this is ultimately it's about people and, and their relationships and behaviors. Um, but we need that technology. And this conference is doing a tremendous job of bringing these different elements together once a year and mm -hmm. always seems we have something to talk about. Right. And I, I told you earlier that it was, you know, you being an immediate past chair of the conference, it, it's, it's gratifying to see that, that, I don't know who all had hand in it, but it seems as though there's more attention paid to the youth and to the, uh, certainly the young investigators, which we always have a panel yeah. on yeah. that. And we always uh, acknowledge the, uh, the young people that are there here in scholarship to make sure that they, they get the most out of the conference. I think the old days we left it to their own de devices. Yes, yes, yes. But I think now we give them a little bit more of a push with some of the, uh, the mentoring and uh, some of the educational seminars that were designed more specifically for them. Uh, and this is an opportunity that to grow them in uh, stature and in, in, uh, in knowledge and uh, an opportunity to make that benefit translatable to their own communities, which is what we're actually asking them yes, to do. Yes, yes. Yeah. And I think that's essential. Uh, you know, you, we all, we're all getting older, including these young mm -hmm. people as they emerge mm -hmm. into uh, you know, the next phase of their career. Mm -hmm. We forget that uh, not everybody knows the history of all of this, so it's, yeah. it is remarkable. Mm -hmm. uh, I find, uh, I, you know, I ask younger people, do they know who Jonathan Mann was, you know, the yeah. first director at WHO, or do they know the history of the research in Africa or whatever, and mm -hmm. uh, of course there's no reason for them to know all of that, uh, mm -hmm. and of course it's a They're truism, yeah, it's a truism that, uh, that many, many of our younger colleagues never saw the, the devastation that AIDS mm -hmm. actually caused. Yeah. Um, I was watching the uh, tribute to, uh, to Yop Longa and mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, Kathleen Van Tungren, Van Tungren, Jacqueline Van Tungren. Um, it was moving, and I, you know, I knew Yop for many times. We've done interviews uh, together, and, and uh, I couldn't help but refresh my memory of Jonathan Mann and, yes. and the, the days when we talked to him at various conferences and, and tried to, because he worked very much with us because we were alternative, and this was something he. Yeah. He yeah. felt was a good thing, yeah. and Tony Fauci was the one that introduced me to him at uh -huh. one of the events up in 94 in yeah. uh, Vancouver. But I couldn't help but think of the similarity in the way both of them died in the same, in a plane crash on the way to a conference or on the way from a conference. It's just tragic, and, and uh, uh, the, sometimes the best people have the most um, tragic end, and, and this was in his case for sure. Yes, Yup was a friend of mine. I knew him, and uh, mm -hmm. I, I was actually in Liberia working on Ebola, 
when mm. I saw, I had just arrived there in July, mm. when I saw the news on TV, mm. and I thought, oh, Lord. And I, of course, also immediately the, thought of Jonathan Mann, this, of yeah, the, the analogy. The same, and, it was just um, the same thing all over again. Yes. And, but, it, but when I heard the plane crash, I th immediately thought of Peter Rice and him. That's all I thought yes, about. Yes. And then when I saw Peter Rice walk in, and we had not yet known the full list. We were I saying, Can, yes. do you have the list? Do you have the list? They yes. didn't have it. Yes. And they told us that, uh, well, the, I think almost the same time they told us, Peter Rice walks into the press area. And I, yes. Just relieved. Yes. And of course, then we did an interview with him, and because he was one of, oh, he was the closest friend. Yes, he was a good friend. To of Yope, and yes. and uh, yes. and it was. Um, I, I don't know. I, I told him I want to do an interview, a follow up, because our re, you know viewers were interested in hearing more about how the how this story played out, because it's a uh, he has a family. And of course, there, there were other people on their way to that conference yeah. as well. There was a WHO communications person mm -hmm. that I knew from my mm -hmm. time in Geneva. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's just an extraordinary event that you and 80, get shot I think out it was of the sky. 80, Eighty some children yeah. Yeah. Uh, on a, 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 some sort of excursion trip, and uh, so there was a, a, a huge amount of horror. And then, of course, the, the, the way in which this all played out with the not recovering bodies and uh, but um, apart from that, it, it, it was something that we all understood that would just be a, uh, an opportunity for us to move on in, in his name. Yes. And that's the way he would have wanted it. And you, you have to, you have to. Um, and I think, I think to the extent it's possible for these things to be positive and well done, mm -hmm. firstly, I'm very pleased that the, the short tribute that was made in the opening mm -hmm. session, mm -hmm. I actually went to the... Um, Amsterdam um, oh, tribute yeah. back in October, mm -hmm. which was remarkably well done. Mm -hmm. The best, you know, if, mm -hmm. the best of these sorts of events I've ever been to. But I was pleased that we were able to just take uh, short segments of that and project them here. Mm -hmm. And I thought David Cooper, uh, Professor David Cooper from us from Sydney, Australia, just who was a very good friend of Yoops and colleague, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I thought he gave a brilliant. Uh, um, talk at the opening session, mm -hmm. which of course the, the named lecture that of course commemorates right. Jonathan Mann, Mann and, yeah. uh, and, and uh, yeah. Bosengi and Gali. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, we, we have tributes all the time and, and there's people dying every day, but there's people that really are, um, provide a, a vacuum to be filled and, and a large vacuum that was in his case and certainly the same with Jonathan Mann. Uh, but I appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to spend with you and re re recount the, the uh, experience. And we hope that at some point we have a, uh, um, a number of things that are going to give a more lasting tribute to, uh, to uh, you. Know, well, I'm sure that will come yes. about. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being with me and uh, again. And I always look forward to seeing you. And I hope that your experience in... Uh, in uh, Kenya is rewarding and uh, fulfilling and uh, certainly, to say the least, useful. <laughs> Always good to see you, Fred. Thank you. <laughs> good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.